Well, good day. Here's another 4D class. Uh, uh, Nico has doing something with some event about his recent book. He won't be with us, and Larissa should be. I don't know where she is. Uh, anyway, I thought uh, the suggestion of lessons learned, uh, just to refresh everybody's memory, when when I went to uh, uh, to Berlin for my birthday in <clears throat> December 2019, uh, the idea of writing a book came up and Michael and Finney came from Beijing. Everybody who came wrote part of the book. And this is what Michael and Finney generated. Uh, they run a company called Exceland, very fond of them. Uh, you can see Michael's got a PhD and MBA. And uh, so we we'll just talk through this thing, if that works for you guys and uh, look at what other people have done with this. Um, Michael, I've, I've talked about this before. My re-entry into China happened with China Aerospace. A young PhD was asked to find a leadership program for China. He found my book and they brought me over and China got interested in, in my work. And, uh, and, and my second trip over there with China Aerospace, we went to meet, meet my publisher and the Chinese are very kind of knowing that it's hard for me to get around there. So uh, so the Dr. Mao is his name, no, re no relation to Chairman Mao. And in Jap Japan and China, the names sound similar, but the characters are completely different. There's like, uh, in Japan, there's like at least 3,000 characters. And so, so anyway, went to see the publisher and Michael walked up to me and never met him before and showed me pictures of him doing uh, doing 4D workshops in China, a person I'd never heard of, which was kind of cool. So he's talking here about the uh, the, the blue personality. And uh, this is, uh, th this was, he said it was transformational for him. And I think this is really the big mindset shift for the blue. Uh, I made it when I had a performance review with my supervisor at the time, having to be a good friend of mine also. And he said, Charlie, you would do better if you'd learned to suffer fools gladly, which of course is from Shakespeare. And I thought about this and, and uh, thought, yeah, that's probably good. So I began to think about my yellow. And so that's the thing he got. And Finney, uh, she, she was a CFO in a high tech company and she got into the 4D work. She's a green. And so once again, this was very useful for them to understand the dynamics of their marriage and who's blue and her greenness. So uh, 40 system, hundreds of thousands, of, hundreds of businesses and tens of thousands of leaders. I don't think this is an overstatement. Uh, seven, 11 4D certified workshops with Beijing, Shenzhen, other cities. And uh, I typically got very high points and uh, the the, the logic of this appeals to the Chinese mind for whatever reason. Their their education system is more rigorous than ours in terms of specific knowledge and examinations. And uh, so this was fun. I, I did many speeches over there, <clears throat> uh, all these companies. They've done over 200 lectures and workshops uh, and China Everbright Bank, two 4D workshops, 12 sessions of social. China Telecom, this is 650,000 employees. I thought they had a million businesses. This, this is a state-owned enterprise. These are these huge companies. Um, the other college said appreciation is very important to cooperation. Seldom expressed it before. Finney talking about qu quitting. <clears throat> And when she found out she was green, she understood why she wasn't happy in her job and quit. Drama. Emotional intelligence, emotions and storylines. She's worked really hard at her own personal development. Appreciation. The, the, the Shindu, this was this was one of my last trips to China. This was a, a big deal. This was interesting. This was the, um, in terms of lessons learned, we had constant conflict 
between the two parts of Volkswagen, the guys that came from Germany and the local Chinese, and you can understand why they have conflict. The, the Chinese are pragmatic above anything else. Rules are to be broken if it gets the job done faster. You see it in driving. In fact, you can learn a lot about a country watching how people drive. <laughs> so when traffic gets heavy, the uh, shoulder becomes the uh, uh, the uh, extra lane. Uh, they're kind of like Italians in the sense if, if, the, if the thing has four lanes and five cars will fit, they'll drive in five lanes. And the Germans, of course, are rules. So what happened here was I, Finney did the group speaking Mandarin with the, what what do the Germans want that we can want for them also? I did the group speaking in English. What do the Mandarin speakers want? I didn't name them Chinese and Germans. I wanted to play that down. So I named them English speakers and Mandarin speakers. And we got up and briefed the two charts to the group and people had tears in their eyes. Uh, and Finney, like many, many, I think the Greens are most prone to drama because they have the most idealistic ideas about the human condition. And she recognized she lives a lot of her time in victim and rescuer and learned to love myself and step out of the rescuer mode. Surprised the symptoms of victim automatically reduced. And some photos. By the way, that's Michael there, and, and that's Finney, and that's me. And that's Amy, our translator. This is in the house that burned down. Michael came to see us here and uh, had all these awards on the wall. They're all gone, doesn't matter. Me, Michael, and Finney. A workshop someplace. Junko and I enjoying Chinese food. And Brett, uh, this is interesting, two people I'd never met came from uh, from uh, Toronto to come to Beijing for this event. And uh, he, he, he came to the, he missed the birthday party, but he came to the, uh, uh, the, the, the workshop. So, he said that uh, airline delay will lead him missing both sitting in Amsterdam and Berlin just added to the red storylines. <clears throat> so he's recognizing and able to name his thoughts as red storylines. This is huge. Why would a top airline have three separate problems in a plane that just landed? How's an airline at their main hub not how to replace this limit of a plane one that was functioning? If I chose to go to the party, I wouldn't be sitting through this painful delay. Need to get home to family's flight, better not be canceled or I'll lose shit. I'm going to lose a client. So he's knowing this. Then he said, realized he was in blamer state. So how could he shift to, to green storylines? So this is what just people wrote. And I didn't edit any of this except to uh, help with the English with the non-English speakers. I appreciate the pilots ensuring we don't get on a plane that isn't safe. I'd rather lose a day than lose my life and not see my wife and family again. With empathy, I realized that, <clears throat> so, so what's he do? He's doing his accountability and empathy to uh, to get the green storyline. Empathy, I realized <clears throat> pilots are really doing their best, risk our lives or what amounts to be a speck of time. We both have the share interest of getting home in a timely matter. Yellow, we were told the flight was canceled. I was in a situation with 300 others, waiting for the shuttle back. I offered a, a couple the use of my gloves and notice they were not prepared to be standing outside the airport at midnight and zero. Nice. Talking to people calmly about how happy I was the airline, but safety first helped out those in a temporary tribe with a positive perspective. I addressed the unfortunate reality as I missed my clients for an off night. I called and explained the situation. I gave any excuses. <clears throat> so this is this is important. He's renegotiating agreements here. This is a big deal to renegotiate agreements before you break them. He's 100% committed to having our, have a good offsite and offer to ship the workshop component the next month. Orange ended up writing out leadership discussion topics at 1 a.m. back at the hotel with only a few hours sleep, going back to the airport. There were multiple talking points to ensure my client had a good offsite without blame on the situation. 
So what he's doing is using the, the 4D format to process his difficulty. Any thoughts or comments on this? I don't think you heard that. Oh, I just said it's so helpful. Like, actually, this story Good. Yeah, this, is a great one. This is a great story. Um, I actually can share I have have my context shifting worksheet <laughs> Good. used last week because we had some very challenging situations that had to be worked through. And I don't know that I navigated it perfectly, but it doesn't matter but let me, I, let me I got a better man. result than let, i would have let me otherwise. help you with that if you get stuck with it I, I definitely will reach out yeah i need to do that i think sitting from the cheap seats and just knowing the work that you're doing and knowing the situation well you used your 4d system to great effect and i would say took a quantum leap forward from like where if this would have happened a year ago your oh, previous, sure. uh, like at the oh. previous company, I would have lit them up. Oh yeah, and it would have felt good in the moment, but it's not constructive to what you're trying to get no. done. So. I probably would be out of a job, which I was prepared to do, honestly. Um, this was like a quantum leap forward. Yeah, nice. It was, yeah, it was really great. Nice. So, this yeah. is a really great story. I love this. This is pretty impressive. His, his total exposure. I, I mean, I don't know. I never met the guy. I, I think I spoke to him once on the phone. He decided to fly to Berlin, maybe likes sausage. I don't know. But anyway, he uh, uh, decided to come to Berlin for this party, which is a non-trivial thing. And then he went and did the whole thing. He did the, the detection of red storylines. This is huge. Yeah. Shifted them with accountability and empathy. He got that. And then he recognized that... Uh, I think this is a, a truism that for almost anything, four dimensionality helps to look at all four pieces of it. And yeah. and that's he, he this was all done. I mean, I had no help with this. He did this all by himself and then sent it, wrote it and sent it in. Wow. So <clears throat> I think the concept of like granted we've been talking about it the whole time but i think it just really hit of the shifting it's like we're we're shifting red to green we're shifting and in my case blue so the the story of just previously we were talking about the blue person learning how to shift to their other colors it's like that's to me that's one of the core concepts because when i go blue if I allow myself to go blue and go deep, it doesn't end well for anybody. And so I have, you know, just that change in perspective shifting is, I guess, hitting for me. Um, well, you know, here's the thing. Uh, under stress, we tend to become more of who we already are. <laughs> That's our comfort level. Yeah. So, so the fact that you can do this in, in the middle of this stressful job is really commendable. That's cool in that. Oh, I was I was using all the stuff. I grounded myself <laughs> belly breathing. It was it was the best I've ever done. <laughs> it was really good. And the and the notes helped. The cheat sheet helped. Good. I, I, I think it's also when you think about this, we've all been in a situation where okay, you are waiting for the airplane and there's a lengthy delay and something. And it's always amazing to me how people who go into the blame, how it's like what they say, misery likes company. <laughs> 15 people complaining and having all these different things, but it usually just takes one person to say something on a different note and say, okay, well, like, you know, it's, it's really unfortunate we are late, but it's much better being here than flying in a plane that is not safe for flying, right? And it's just very often, it just takes that one person with a sobering voice to just calm down the whole group of those who are, but, but if it, if that doesn't happen, it keeps on going. Well, just you know, what I, well, what I do is I walk up to the, the counter and say, just so you know, I've been doing this long enough that I don't blame the person who's standing behind the counter for the fact the plane's late. 
<laughs> yeah. You, you had nothing to do with this. Right. <laughs> so, and that gets a big smile, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, like, like you say, it changes the mood, yeah, I, I think, for everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's just stupid. I watch people rant and rave at these people. And so, okay, good comments. Move on. Yes. Here's another one. A finance leader, Derek. This might be you. He's in <laughs> Toronto. I don't know. Would you go by Darla sometime? I don't know. Uh, do you know Brett? Uh, no. Okay. I was coaching a finance leader recently called Darla. Excellent regard to compliance and fiduciary responsibility. Asked her about her business partners. <clears throat> her innate personality preference was directing. Excellent command and control. Did a good job resisting blaming and complaining. Enhancing her vision and cultivating including. She participated in strategy sessions, didn't drive them, and was a gap to her being 100% committed to the vision. So he just was coaching her is what he's talking about. The challenge of finance will always be serving an orange function with balance and 4D approach. Committed to adding more strategy, blue, cultivating deeper relationships with business leaders, green, appropriate including yellow. Always see improvement and awareness as the first step, step in the journey towards being a better leader. Nice. So are you, as an orange, do you have the same frustrations, Dorinka? Well, it's a, well, the, the, the first thing is I, I learned now, I come in and I say, so the bearer of all the bad news is coming because <laughs> you usually, right? Like when we go to present things, it's usually nothing, not, nothing good, right? If it's of <laughs> any interest, it's not good. If, if I, if everything is balanced and there's plenty of money, we don't go to present. So it's also that. The other thing that really, in, in my personal case, what I think really does not serve me well is that I have seen situations where people have been audited and I know what happened after that. So now when I see someone walking into situation and making same mistake, it's really painful for me, but it's very hard to explain to people. And it's also people don't tend to trust lawyers and accountants when they tell them what if all goes wrong. But, you know, unfortunately, things do go wrong and they go wrong more often than people think. That's at least what I think. At the same time, like, so that's what's in my head. In my head is how do I protect these people so they get the business done, but do, they don't get in trouble, right? Versus you have someone who's like, oh, I, I won't get in trouble. Let me just do what I want. So the it's cowboy. really, say it again. I, I call that the cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot first and ask questions later. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're speaking a lot of truth, Dorinka. Ready, fire, aim. Yep. Yeah, so it's, so it's like I know when when there was a economic crisis in two thousand eight, right? When market the bottom of the market fell through. When you think about well, people who like how how did it all happen? Well, people who were buying did not did not know what they're buying, and neither did those who were selling, and that's what really got it because it took tens of thousands of people to replicate that action for for the crisis to re really be that bad right so it's it's like <laughs> if it's too good to be true it usually is right yep. yeah <laughs> yeah if it yeah. seems too good to be true it probably is <laughs> yeah yeah and it's it's like well the other day i was reading here in paper they found well because i work for the regulator so we, we look into our cases. Well, people came to a casino and had a piece of paper that says that they transferred millions of dollars to the casino to gamble. And then apparently the employee 
took that piece of paper, called the number on that piece of paper. Guess what? The, the voice on the other end confirmed that that's a legitimate wire transfer. And you know the rest. Well, of course, it was there was no money behind mm -hmm. that. And it's like, so what gets me, like when you talk to people, you talk about controls and risks and all of that. Nobody thinks about that. And I'm thinking, whoa, wasn't that the first thing that you were taught? Don't trust that. Just call your proper bank. Like call someone you know. But it, like they fell for that several times for several millions of dollars. Mm. Like I'm not talking 10 grand or so, like it's millions. So so things do happen. So that's why at the same time, I know statistically, not everything happens all the time. So yes, the case for that cowboy mentality, they say, what's my chance of being caught? <laughs> okay. So that's that's that part of orange that gets really tough where we always like we are and we are trained at school to think if all goes wrong what then? Okay, thank you. Interest that's an interesting perspective around being trained if all goes wrong, right? Like how do you work your way out of it? Because just the, the focus is almost like a red storyline that you're trained on, right? Like that's a hard thing, right? And then to like confront a different, like entirely different way of operating in the world, right? Despite years of formal education and training to kind of this red storyline. So I, I would see that as being challenging. It can be. It, yeah. Just drink is right. You're seen as like, you know, Captain No. Um, you know, the destroyer of all parties, um, you know, but it's, it's funny because I was, as you were reflecting drink, I was thinking about some of my own stories and it's like being a blue, I'm a little bit of an unusual finance guy, but like I, I had to give some bad news to a board of directors and I basically, you know, gave them a worst case, most likely case, best case. And my worst case was zero sales. And the board was like, that's impossible. Like, you know, mm -hmm. and then one of my mentors late, I was reflecting on the story. He's like, we actually didn't give them worst case because what if, what if they didn't sell anything and they get sued because they were a safety. Yeah, I was like, oh, good. shoot. Yeah. Right. I didn't actually give them the worst case. Like, but they still didn't believe me. But like, like if I had shifted the needle even further, would they have, would I've got some credibility? You know, like, it was probably a situation where I was never going to communicate the right thing because they were a bunch of blues mm -hmm. that refused to see the orange storyline. So, um, so back, the, they're reasoning by analogy again. Yes. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's never happened, so it's not going to. Yep. Um, yep. You know, I I have a slightly different perspective on finance, um, and maybe it'll help to hear this so that you don't feel like you're like the, the breaker of all wishes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the finance guy that I work with and actually in a couple other companies, some of them being even pretty dysfunctional, but the finance guys that I have worked with, they were actually an enabler to being mm -hmm. able to do and bring forth some of these really cool product innovations. So I've had really excellent partnership with finance, especially in the company I have right now. And it's a really collaborative relationship around how can we figure out a way to do this? So there's like almost a complete flip of like green storyline of like, how mm -hmm. can we, how can we solve the problem? They've been really great. So but you're, you're a green that accesses orange. You're really fun for finance people. to think that. <laughs> I don't always have that. Maybe. <laughs> Did you say I was 4D or 3D? Yeah, it's a, it's like for me, I always think about, okay, what do they need and what is the way to get there? Yeah. Right. So, that, so that's where it is. And, you know, outside of finance, also the very interesting part is procurements. So I work for government. So we do government procurements. Well, that one is a really really an interesting uh file where you can you can really be in a very positive way you can be very creative and create 
excellent results, right? Like you can really bring a partner who can do you you can do great things with them, or it can go horribly wrong. Yeah. And, and right, like you can not get anything and get sued. As right, <laughs> right, right. So it's a yeah. That's a that's a really interesting file, and it's a. And I've seen I've seen people who are like I had a manager in that area who was blue, was really great. The only thing we needed to make sure is that someone else from finance checks on their numbers mm. because they they do the whole strategy and everything great, but I mean someone needs to really the do a reality yeah do reality check that to make sure yeah okay it's actually going to work in the end yeah. But also, I had someone who was really orange, but extreme. And answer to every question to everyone was a no. And I was like, <laughs> well, it doesn't work like that because the purpose of procurement is not to say no. The purpose is to buy something yeah. for someone. You get, a, get the job <laughs> done. <laughs> they can't all end up in jail after they've done it. That's That's fine. But I mean, the answer... So literally, the person had a no for everything. Yeah. We call him the abominable no man. <laughs> we had a name for them too, the abominable no so, man. So something that I would like to talk about more, Charlie, and, and maybe you've got some some use cases in, in your back pocket. And if you don't, I, you know, I certainly have situations in my life. But it's, and we've talked about this a little bit, it's the handling people that want to play win-lose. Like I'm all about the win-win, but if you want to play win-lose, it's sometimes difficult to find that no game path, right? To to use the seven habits terminology. And I, I think you've got some other terminology around that, but it's like, even in my existing company, I do feel like I'm fighting against some forces that want to play win-lose and you know, we're, we're dabbling with the nuclear option in a couple of cases. And I, you know, fortunately haven't had to go there, but, um, you know, I'm prepared to. What's, we'll what's the, what's the nuclear home. option? Just leaving, just being done. Like I can't, I can't be successful in this environment. If oh, just you leave? Lose. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you know, I, I, I really think the only, thing I know is to limit your attention to changing other people or worrying about them. Just, you know, it's just a waste of energy. Yeah. And so uh, I think it's back to that core agreement. Just be, I don't, I don't think you can do anything better than, than what Gandhi talks about. Be the change you want to see in the world. That's in your integrity. That's in your um, good energy, health, everything. Right. And, and if they're, you know, as, as <clears throat> the, I used to have a business partner, he said, it's, it's really hell working with real people. <laughs> there is. <laughs> On your feet. Right. You want me to camera off or do you care? I don't care. You know, I don't care. You know, it's uh, where attention goes, power flows. Yeah, that when, is. When I think back to the people that were the really uh, great people, and I'm talking about a, a guy, a name comes to mind, a guy named Jim Odom, who was my manager for Hubble. The defining feature of this guy is he just wouldn't get 
down the dirt with anybody. He just wouldn't do it. And stayed in that kind of uh, constructive space. And he just wouldn't pay, wouldn't put his attention on the, the, the troublemakers. And they all just were dissipated away when you don't attend to them. The, the win-lose people, the, there's a certain kind of person that needs attention more than anything else. And that's, they learned to get it as a child by being a, with bad behavior and it works for them. So they keep doing it. So I think bring your attention off of them and back to yourself and know what you're about. And and I, some people don't see it this way, but I, I tell people when it gets in the too hard category, move on. You know, right? Okay. Um, Coaching. Yeah, I think that's on? that's kind of where I'm at, and I think you know the things that made last week so difficult is that call him my nemesis just because he he's kind of my number one challenge. He's my blocker, right? And he started interfering with the performance of my team. And that's when I put the hammer down and said, you can't. Well, that's a, that's a boundary issue. So yep. I, I, I had a good friend who was a preeminent psychologist. And she, she said, uh, good life only requires two things, reliable processes to resolve conflicts and clean, respected boundaries. And I think you're, that's a, that, that would name that a boundary issue and that's not okay. Yep. Yep. So I I went to the mat on that one and yeah. we had very hard direct conversations. And well, I mean, I, I think the bigger point is that you can't hold me accountable for what you need me to do if you're gonna mess with my ability to do it. Mm -hmm. I I had a uh, <clears throat> I had a guy that tried to manage me once by giving me a deputy <clears throat> and uh and the, the deputy was reporting to him, not me. And I said, get him out of here. He said, well, if I do that, I'm going to punish you in this way. I said, I don't care. I'm not going to be in a situation where I'm accountable for something I can't control. And I can't control this individual. So, And I'm accountable for running this program. So get him out. And they did. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I, th I think one of the really important things is to be able to name things. And I think you name it as a boundary issue it makes it real clean. Right. This is, this is true in, in marriages and other relationships as well. Boundaries have to be respected. And when they're violated, you need to just say, that's not okay. And I think it, it comes back to what you're accountable for. So <clears throat> I think that's the, the conversation is, you know, if I'm going to be accountable for this, I've got to be able to manage it. Yeah. And, Otherwise, it's I'm uh, I, I'm not I cannot be accountable for something that you're going to control. Yep, that's that's the issue. Yeah, that's helpful. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all. Good good conversation. <clears throat> Coaching session with Orville conflict with another employee. He had the uncanny ability to speak first and think second. Losing his temper, I described Orville as a popcorn machine. Pop off. The funny thing was he always regretted it. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Found his person, innate personality cultivating, realized his strengths, feeling his feelings, having lofty goals, overshadowed by his negative 1D state, hypersensitive victim, overly emotional, raised his level of self-awareness, so he was able, in these stressful conditions, he'd have the tools to cope. Yeah, so what he's talking about here is that the diagonal and the drama stuff, I mean, uh, acknowledge it, name it for what it is, and once you do that, stop, stop it. I think one of the most interesting things about this system of thinking is that you, it gives you terminology to talk about things that I don't know that anybody else really does. Under stress, we tend toward our 1D state, learned how to keep us cool before the popcorn started to fly. I was in this meeting the other day, an issue camp without our coaching would have spun me completely out of control. 
Recognize entering a victim mindset. Again, how are you feeling? If you're not feeling good, you're probably in drama. You can't change his innate personality as the tool to experience a 4D life. Nice story. Thoughts? Tanya was smiling. She read ahead. <laughs> I did read ahead. I was entertained and tickled by the Orville because he would pop off. Uh, um, no, as a green, I can certainly relate to this. Um, and the, I think the biggest thing for greens oftentimes is this kind of grounding, right? And being self-aware of like, the temperature inside is starting to rise. <laughs> how, how do you, right? Because you have these idealistic expectations. And if everyone would just see it the way you would see it and just be, you know, a good, decent human being, they'd all be on board, but yep. <laughs> not particularly <laughs> how all of us operate. And so, you know, and it's a very myopic way, it can be a op myopic way of looking at things. So I think that is kind of the, the um, way to have a pressure release valve for uh, the greens before it does turn into popping off is this kind of self-awareness. Good. I think for, for a lot of these individuals, they very often go unsanctioned for a very long time. And you hear people say, well, he's okay. Or, or she like, oh, sometimes they have that little block, but otherwise they're okay. Until that individual has experience, like firsthand experience of that blow up and they're like, oh, wow, yeah, it's not really pleasant. So in my mind, it's, I think, best service to those individuals is to, for that to get sanctioned as early as possible mm -hmm. so that they can actually gain self-awareness. Yeah. And then they, they, then hopefully they know how to recognize <laughs> when it's starting. Now, this may sound uh, crazy, but the, the, the people who have the most trouble learning this kind of thing are the ones that are really technically smart. Mm -hmm. uh, I've encountered this over and over. But when, when they're able to manipulate their life successfully with their technical abilities, <clears throat> they use the same strategies with people and doesn't work. Okay, here, Sharon is, uh, I've done tons and tons of work with Sharon uh, over the years. She actually has a, uh, her husband uh, is a uh, builder of uh, commercial buildings. And one that, one has a whole floor in this very modern high rise with dedicated to 4D, the 4D lab. And these two folks, I don't know as well, but they're associates of hers. <clears throat> 4D is a system to resolve business crises. I've been coaching a mobile home service, senior management team, leader and founder of the company looked like his hair was on fire. The company might be facing a $12 million penalty from Apple because phones weren't done at the right time. Although the team had not been trained in 4D, we thought the context shifting worksheet might work. Saw Charlie do a miracle 4D public workshop and knew of its success with proposal teams. So that, that example that I showed you in the workshop was a team that had never heard of 4D. I did the context shifting worksheet with people that had no prior knowledge and it worked. Wrote the situation, their outcomes to not only find a solution, but how to prevent the same mistake in the future and produce more business next year. Watched the tension in the room alleviate, encouraged by the team's self motivated desire to do better. Asked how the first realizations of the situations made him feel. He said he felt lousy. No one thought it was important. Damn it, he realized he's in blamer, shifted his storyline. Nobody expected this low probability event to happen, forced him to discover it earlier. Other participants, how we could shift into a responsible state. Good connections with Apple can negotiate a better deal. <clears throat> Show them how we improved our systems. This kind of thing will never happen again. The room was alive. 
took them to the eight behaviors, appreciated the person who exposed the issue and those already engaged in crisis management, recognized their shared interest at the of preventing future crises, acknowledged our prior broken agreement plan to process it with Apple with the five steps, clarify RAAs with unfortunate buck passing led to this crisis, assign action items with, with dates and deliverable to move forward. Everybody was committed to proceeding with the smart action plan to mitigate the risk. The founder appreciated the team for his effort, their efforts and the scraps his personal improvement to vigorously keep his agreements. The results showed the CSW is useful in dealing with the business crisis, although our first trial with the team had no prior experience. Management team immediately scheduled a three-day 4D workshop. Objective was to establish a high-performance and low-risk team social context as a new business strategy. For three months, the founder valued the 4D changes as 10 million renminbi. Nice. So as she went right through the, 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 the context shifting worksheet, you see that here? The, the only thing she really didn't focus much on is the, the, the storyline shift with the group, but he did the storyline shift, then the eight behaviors changed the context. It feels to me like if you can get a leader to shift their context, the people underneath them are given the space and it just happens. Yeah. The, At least it uh, certainly greases the skids. The, the hierarchical or technical leaders are the single most influential people. That goes back to our tribalism. Okay. This is Gian, a high tech software R&D team Ranked fifth in all China was tortured by a difficult situation. They failed to finish new system as scheduled. Another 12 months. Crisis of trust between the owner and subcontract need to be tackled off immediately. Mr. Zhang <clears throat> asked <clears throat> our 4D coaches to provide a 4D workshop. After learning basics, stood and expressed appreciation to the owner's side project managers. This initiated SEE's significant emotional events, launching appreciation everywhere, flooding the classroom with laughter and warmth. Each wrote what they want that we can offer them also, finding lost shared interest, timely hand over the new system, replacement existing system, success of pilot introduction, deep inclusion by patiently listening to the other person's ideas, <clears throat> acknowledge their broken agreements with the owner's people, then process them with the five state agreements, negotiated new agreements, acknowledge the unfortunate reality of lack of cooperation and lack of coordination, work with remedies with a 4D coach, help the owner replace their red storyline. They're incapable and will always break agreements with a green one. They really want to solve problems, help the project team replace their red storyline, they always ignore our efforts and blame us for the green one. They're helping us solve problems by proposing a new development methodology. Became closer related after the personality test. People from both sides were energized and <clears throat> agreed to keep practicing 4D in the workplace, sharing their practices every day in the AMBR format, every day on WeChat. That's pretty powerful. Hmm? That's an interesting idea, the sharing of Amber on a, a chat mm -hmm. like big, i'd be kind of curious to see what that looked like in practice you know i can send you his email address and cool. you can ask him that would be neat I would, I would love that he's telling why don't you say i'd like to know more about this i'm tom who you are and uh yeah <clears throat> and that would be he also flew to uh beijing for the party so Yeah, that would be real. I would I would like to see yeah, what yeah. that looked like for them. I remember him recently on something. I'm sure I have his email address. That'd be great if you do. Um I would I would appreciate that. Here's another one. First TDA was 73% with four people in the red quintile. 
<clears throat> a second TDA with no, which scored in the top quintile with no individuals in the bottom quintile. What happened? After their three-day workshop, they continuously practice 4D in their workplace, sharing aha moments on WeChat. <clears throat> on the first day following the three-day workshop, a female project manager from the owner's side shared her experiences. Here, here we go. Here's the AMBR format. A, I requested a process report from the contract project managers. I focused on their lack of response. Mindset, I became annoyed. I felt lousy and checked my storyline. It was... They should be punished for that. Then I realized I was in the blamer state. What is my role in creating the mess? Then I got it. I never asked them, so why did they not respond? Behavior I asked for the reason over WeChat. They were apologetic, had a good explanation, understood the situation, said to them, Would you please tell me when you could provide it? They responded with a pleasing answer. I met my needs without conflict. Later that day, the project. Contracts project manager told us secretly it was wonderful she could behave this way as she had never done before. Can be seen in the numbers. Four months later, they accomplished a milestone one month ahead of schedule. Considering there are more than 60 people involved, costing 1 million B per month, every 1% TDA raise saved 12,000 B and four days of schedule. Powerful stuff, huh? That's very cool. Maybe that's your answer right there. Yeah, that was pretty good. <clears throat> Karen on accountability. I delivered a 4D workshop for a prominent Chinese super cybersecurity technology company. Although this was not an intact team, they wanted to set up a class committee do RAAs. <clears throat> I'm, I'm impressed here. These people really got the material, didn't they? Well, Sharon's probably done 20 workshops with me. Use my worksheet. As expected at the beginning, they assigned accountability for their roles rather than the results. Emphasize one must be accountable for the results. This is important stuff. This gradually became clear. The accountability of the study committee was not to leave one student behind. The responsibility of the disciplinary committee was that every student abide by workshop agreements. As Peter Drucker said, rank does not confer privilege or give power. It imposes responsibility, which is what I call accountability. Thoughts? I'm just processing and taking <laughs> notes and rapidly trying to figure out how I can further integrate this. Um, this is, I think this is kind of the magic key. Um, you know, I don't, I'll be curious to hear your thoughts, Dorinka, but I think finance, I always see finance as kind of the ambassador of, of accountability because we tell mm -hmm. people how they're doing um, with data. Um, it's not always easy to do because good data is hard to find sometimes. Um, but, um, that's kind of what I've always seen. My role is, is showing people the reality so that they can understand and, and make effective decisions from that. I think we've circled back to where Dorinka was about half an hour ago. And that is, uh, what is your accountability regarding results? So if, if, if finance or procurement sees their role as being a policeman, that doesn't like that's not accepting accountability for what the company needs from them. They need that, but they need them to be accountable for results. Yeah. And that's the mindset shift that Dorinka talked about about half hour ago. Blue customer questions, orange solution. No surprise here. As a team, we present ed educational solution to important customer demand the development platform. Customer not be satisfied, demanded improvements to the platform function. Our third presentation, customer furious saying our solution was too basic, not apply for budget from his management. We were confused, far unhappy. 
We thought the customer was orienting rationally. Our solution focused on providing detailed function descriptions as, as and utility. We investigated the customer's evaluation of previous projects and found that their focus was on forward thinking. Plus the customer was actually a blue and won a visionary proposal. We adjusted the presentation to address three phases over three years with amazing possibilities. The customer was delighted. We addressed the correct innate personality. The customer loves our forward looking solution and now willing to explore the current stage in their turn budget size. So I've talked about this too, that this administrator that no one could talk with was a 1D blue. And I would always approach him with the, the visioning part of it. And once he was happy, once I got his, he, he, he was popcorn too. I mean, he was, this guy was nothing but popcorn. So once, once I turned the flame down, he could hear the rest of it. And so it, he ma it made him pleased and happy to, to, so this is an important, I think, uh, communication tool, and probably more so with the blues than anybody. We tend to be, I think, more often right, but never in doubt than anybody. <laughs> I know. It's kind of the piece of <laughs> it's not ever get old. <laughs> I've heard it before, and it's not <laughs> <That's> old. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> yeah. Guilty as charged. <laughs> I love that expression too. Often wrong, but never in doubt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, we got a couple of minutes left. Any closing remarks about the session or the process or what we did? Was this useful? No, I want to take all of this and just reread it and meditate on it because it's so rich and so good and useful. Right? You can see how um, different people come from it differently and solve problems uniquely, right? And they, and all of us might have chosen a different path in any one of these use cases, but it always works. <laughs> it always <clears throat> works. Does it surprise you that this things in China are exactly the same as here? Not really, no. I mean, you could read this, you wouldn't know you're in China, right? Mm, correct. Yeah, sure. the only thing that gives it away is some of the word word choice. Yeah, right. Some of the, the English, I mean, they're not, a, yeah, it's not a native speaker. Yeah, That's right. Completely. Um, and they are are very good at English. They're they're above average for sure. Um, so, yeah, it's, I, I did some editing of this, too. So but even so, uh, either way, it, it's a very different language. So I give them credit. It's much. Yeah, well, it's much more difficult than, say, French or German to English. For sure, yeah, for sure. It's a mind shifting, I think. I know a couple of people who would say they tried to learn one word, just one word to, to say it and to write it. And it's incredibly difficult, so. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't do languages easily at all. It's This has been great. Um, I actually need to jump to another meeting, but um, yeah, thank, you, thank you. This was this was wonderful. Um, yeah. I'm like Tanya. I just want to ingest it. Yeah, roll around in it for a while. Do you need me to resend this document? I can do that. Be great if you would bump it to the top of our inboxes. Yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to send out the link from this session. I'll put this. I'll attach this again in it. Thank you. Thank you for preparing it for us, Charlie. Thank you. Yes. Really so good. Thank my you. pleasure. It might, I enjoy these sessions immensely. Okay. Thank Us too. It's fun. <laughs> 10 o'clock. Keep my agreements. Bye-bye. Thanks, bye. everyone. Thank you. Bye.